use your God power to get everything you ever wanted and live the life of your dreams. The Master's Course. Copyright 2010 by Richard Lee McKim Jr. All rights reserved. Let the quest for knowing begin. Okay, let's have a look at this illustration here. Okay, God power exercised by decision. Here it says the physical meaning of the person, like always, a person and his body. Then you have the thought meaning that he's got a disease with no cure possible. The doctors told him that. They said, everybody who's ever had this has died. There is no cure for it. Even though we operated, it's probably going to come back and it's probably going to kill you. That's what they told him. So, because that's what he believed, that's what he thought, that was the meaning he asserted to his own situation. Here it says, the physical meaning, the operation was actually effective. So, what was the result? He died. So, you see, you take the physical meaning of a person, then you add in the thought meaning that he's got a disease that's not curable, then you add in the meaning of a successful operation, which doesn't mean anything because an operation against a disease that has no cure means nothing. A disease that has no cure, the meaning of no cure possible, trumps, is more powerful than any operation, than any medicine, than anything else. So you take an incurable disease, you can operate, you can give medicine, you can do whatever, doesn't matter. You're going to die. And so he did. Because he gave the meaning to his situation as being one he's going to die from. Now, the interesting thing about this example is in the example just before this one, the one where the guy gave the meaning to his disease, that his disease was incurable. Okay. He gave the meaning to the disease he actually had as being incurable. And so the disease itself was not cured. And so he did die from the disease. But in this situation, there was no disease. It was gone. It had been operated and it was all taken out. Still, he gave a meaning to his situation since there was no disease anymore. He gave the meaning to the situation was this situation that I have is going to kill me. And so even though there wasn't any more disease, it was gone. It had been operated on, had been removed successfully. He still died. Now, isn't that interesting that you can give a meaning to your situation that will kill you? And you don't even have a disease. You don't even have a reason that you died. When, the, when they did the autopsy, there was nothing in his body that killed him. He just died. All by himself. That was the meaning he gave it. He said... My situation is going to kill me, and so he died. Period. Simple as that. Here it says, harmful meanings have been activated and are being elicited from the situation. Sure enough, he's got the uh, red tuning fork again. He's thinking, I'm going to die. And so, look at all these red tuning forks all being activated. They're all vibrating. He's eliciting them. I don't know what actually killed him. Maybe his heart just stopped. I don't know. But whatever it was, he elicited it, caused it to happen. Not, it wasn't, the, the body was just doing what it was supposed to. He says, I'm going to die, so the body just dies. That's what he elicited. Now, look at all these green tuning forks. He, if he would have thought he was going to live, he'd still be alive today. He'd be playing with his grandchildren. Look at all those green tuning forks that were there. They were there. He could have lived. The autopsy proved that. The autopsy proved that there was no cancer. None. It was gone. Yeah, he had a tiny piece of cancer, but when you watch the video, that's somewhere else. I don't know. It was uh, somewhere else.
But it wasn't in his throat. It wasn't the throat cancer. And the cancer he had was just a speck of it. And it didn't kill him. It probably could have been removed by another operation once they found it. He'd be alive. He'd be alive. So we know he could have lived. There's green tuning forks there that are dormant, that are not being activated. Those are the ones that say, I'm going to live. I'm going to be cured. Life is great. Didn't elicit them. They're quiet. They're not being activated. Only the negative ones. I'm going to die. It's all over. You know, I'm done. And sure enough, that's what happened. That's what he elicited. By the meaning that he gave his situation. Now, it wasn't the meaning he gave the disease because the disease was gone. It had been removed. So, it was the meaning he gave his situation. The situation I'm in, I'm going to die. So, what happens? You add all the meanings together and you die. Here it says, in these prior examples, we changed the meaning of a pill that we actually ingested or an operation that we actually had. However, we are not limited to changing the meaning of physical matter. We can change and assign meanings to events, circumstances, and situations that have no physical form. We just saw that in this prior example. He gave a meaning to a situation because there was no disease there. There was no physical form. He just gave, I'm going to die, meaning to his situation. His situation, which had no actual disease there. So there was no actual physical form for that meaning. Real case number two. So far, we have seen examples where someone has lived because of the placebo effect, or they have died because of it. Now, we will see a case where the same man first had a miracle recovery from cancer and lived because of the placebo effect, and then later had a catastrophic relapse of cancer and died because of the placebo effect. Your beliefs and meanings are the source of life or death. What something means to you and you believe to be true becomes true for you. That is the placebo effect for the good or the bad. No incident better illustrates this than a now famous case reported by psychologist Bruno Klopfer. Klopfer was treating a man named Wright who had advanced cancer of the lymph nodes. All standard treatments had been exhausted and Wright appeared to have little time left. His neck, armpits, chest, abdomen, and groin were filled with tumors the size of oranges, and his spleen and liver were so enlarged that two quarts of milky fluid had to be drained out of his chest every day. But Wright did not want to die. He had heard about an exciting new drug called Cribiosin, and he begged his doctor to let him try it. At first, his doctor refused because the drug was only being tried on people with a life expectancy of at least three months. But Wright was so unrelenting that his doctor finally gave in. He gave Wright an injection of Cribiosin on Friday. But in his heart of hearts, he did not expect Wright to even last the weekend. Then the doctor went home. To his surprise, on the following Monday, he found Wright out of bed and walking around. Klopfer reported that his tumors had, quote, melted like snowballs on a hot stove, unquote, and were half their original size. This was a far more rapid decrease in size than even the strongest x-ray treatments could have accomplished. Options. Now activating the next video, play options. One moment please. Click on the green arrow to start watching the next video. Or, click on the red arrow to start watching the prior video. Or, 
click on the tan arrow to go to the main course menu and guide with links to all course chapters, excerpts, and special reports. Up next, special video options. Click on your choice of course videos, menus, and excerpts. Now switching to the special video options menu and activating the video selection buttons. Click on your selection number to start watching the video. Fifteen seconds till we switch to the next page with a free download information. Pause the video now if you need more time to review the available selections. This is the end of this course video. Its video number is listed above. To watch the next video, simply click on the next video in number sequence. Thank you.